Page 24. Uh, we're looking at angles within a triangle. Okay, so we dealt with just angles in general. We got um, acute, a right, an ugly, and an obtuse. You were paying attention. Um, then we dealt with segment addition, angle addition, and now we are going to look at the angles within a triangle. Okay. Uh, first of all, we have two theorems here. Remember the word theorem means that this is a statement that can easily be proven in math. Um, it's also something you want to keep in mind as you are working these problems, okay? So your flip book has this on the front. At the top is the interior angle sum theorem. At the bottom is the exterior angle theorem. Okay, so look at the top. This is a triangle right here. There is a relationship in every single triangle, no matter what, how it's drawn, no matter if it's obtuse, acute, right, ugly, small, big, weird. It does not matter how the triangle is drawn. If it's a triangle, this relationship holds true. And that is that the three angles added up equal 180 degrees. I'm going to say it again. The angles of every triangle add up to 180. Every day, all day, no matter what. Okay? That's the takeaway here. So if you look at this picture, we know that, and I wish, please fix your picture. Fix your picture so that there's a degree symbol. 45 degrees, 95 degrees, and then right here's angle C. We don't know it. But we can find it because it's a triangle. We're talking about the angles. They have to add up to 180, and I know two of them, right? So I want you with your paper and pencil, I want you to write the, sorry, 45 degrees plus 95 degrees plus angle C has to equal 180. Okay, 45 plus 95 is what? Uh, whenever we're doing this, like, can we use X or does it have to be angle C? Oh, yeah, you can do X. Yeah, that's fine. Um, 45 plus 95 is 140. And then what? subtract that over. And what do you get? Angle C would have to be 40 degrees. So right here would be 40. It really is. Well, let's beef it up a little. Alright, look at the next example. <coughs> We're just going to dive right into the deep end. Look at the next example. How many triangles are there? That's not a trick question. How many are there? Two. Two, right? See this one. This one. There's two triangles. Go back to what we talked about with vertical angles. Hope y'all are paying attention. Look at this. You see this line here? And then this line here? Those are two straight lines, right? Which means there's actually a pair of vertical angles in this picture that are not marked. And that's going to happen a lot. So start training yourself to find the vertical angles because vertical angles are, starts with a C, congruent. congruent. And if you know one of them, then you know the other one. Look right here. This is 50 degrees. Those two straight lines form vertical angles. So what does this angle here have to be? 50 as well. And I want you to take your pencil and to make a note, I'm going to put the 50 here because we got crowded. I want you to draw an arrow and write vertical angles. Now this is how I abbreviate the word angles. I draw the angle symbol and then I put an S after it. 
So we have vertical angles right there. Vertical angles. <coughs> so what is the missing angle measure over here? This is 90. How did you get that? You're there. Keep going. So if you look at this triangle here, 40 plus the 50 is 90. They have to add up to what again? 180. So that means that this right here has to measure 90. Coming over to the triangle right next to it, there's um, something here to let me know this is not just a random triangle. What are these tick mark means? Right here and here. It means that those sides measure the same length, okay? Which means it's what type of triangle? Do you remember? A triangle with two congruent sides. Starts with an I. Isosceles. Isosceles. This is an isosceles triangle. Something we're going to learn is however many congruent sides are in a triangle dictates the congruent angles. I'm going to say it again. However many congruent sides there are is the same as the number of congruent angles. So if there's two congruent sides, then there's two congruent angles in there as well, every time. If there were three congruent sides, there would be three congruent angles, which means they would all be the same. All right, so there's two congruent angles here. I'm going to show you where they are. Think of this as like a rooftop. This is going to come up again down the road. Think of it as like a rooftop, right? Yes? the congruent angles of an isosceles triangle are always at the base, the bottom, if you think of it as a rooftop. So if this is 50 here, then this is 50 over here. And that's because it's an isosceles triangle. This is something you're learning. We're going to draw an arrow to it. We're going to write isosceles triangle. Now, do you have enough to find that third angle in that triangle? Yeah, you should be able to do it in your head, right? Could we, would it always be like that? Could we think of it as under the line? Could we think of it as under the line? Could we think of it as under the line? Yeah, if you turn it like a, always use the phrase, turn it like a rooftop. Because some of the examples we're going to have might be on their side. So some people think, oh, it's here and here. Uh, no, you would have to imagine like turning it like a rooftop, and then yes, it's always the ones um, underneath the congruent marks. So if this is 50 and this is 50, I've used how much so far? 100, and I only, I cap out at 180, so this would be 80. That is the interior angle sum theorem. We are going to open our flip book and practice this now. Your flip book is organized so that the top portion is examples of what we just learned. Okay? We have two examples here. We've got this one on the left, and then we've got this more complicated one over here on the right. When you first look at it, you probably think, oh my word. It's like a puzzle, and it's going to be like a domino effect, where as you start to find a couple, they just start falling in place. Mm -hmm. So always look at your picture and label as you go, because it makes life easier. I'm actually not even going to look at this right here, these three angles. I'm going to go straight to the picture, and I'm going to treat it like a puzzle. Y'all stay with me. This is important. I have triangle A, B, C. I have triangle B, C, D, then I have the bigger triangle A, B, D. Do you see all three of them? Remember, in any triangle, the three angles add up to 180. 
So find the triangle where you know two of the angles because then the third one's easy to find. 180 minus the two you know. So my mind immediately goes to triangle ABC. I know two of them. So I have enough info to find the third one. 180 minus 51 minus 47 is what? 82. So this is 82 degrees. Label as you go. Now, somehow we've got to get over to this triangle, B, C, D. There it is. Y'all see a straight line? Y'all remember, um, geometry, math, is a staircase, right? So what I taught you last week, it should be in the back of your mind because it's going to come into play. This is a straight line right here. From here to here would measure what? Um, 180. It's a linear pair. It's making a straight line. So I have enough info to find that piece next to it. 180 minus 82 is 98. Now I know two of the angles in that BCD triangle. I can find the third angle. 180 minus 98 minus 48, and there's not enough room here, so I'm going to draw an arrow, would be what? Did you get 34? Yes. Now, answer these three questions by tracing the angle. Make sure you're looking at the correct one, and then let's see if you got it right. You're answering those three angle measures. So let's see if you got them right. Did you say 82, 98, 34? Okay, let's look at it. A, C, B. So from A to C to B, and then it's the part in the middle. So that's where the 82 is the answer. See that? Next is B to C to D, and it would be the portion that is touching both of the sides I just traced, which would be 98. Got to be the one in the middle, or that middle letter. So this would be 98. D, B, C. So what's that talking about? What measure? <coughs> 34. Okay. Coming over to the really big picture. There is a lot going on there. It is way more helpful if you just go in and label the picture instead of trying to read all of these angles first. Just go to the picture and start labeling. Find triangles where you know two angles. Look for linear pairs. There is, there's two vertical angles in this picture. Remember that's formed by straight lines crossing. There's two vertical angles in this picture. And then the very last part is probably going to land you here with these two. Well, no, not those two. With that one. The one that I have highlighted in yellow is probably going to be the one you, you struggle to get. And I want to, I'll tell you what to do for that one once everybody has tried it.
So right now, go through and label all of these nooks and crannies. Don't forget, what does this little square mean? This means 90. So that's an angle addition part right there. They, they have to add up to 90. Is that 60 or 80? I didn't get 60. This is 20. Okay, yeah. It should be 80. Because this, I don't think this is 90. Yeah. Yeah. Right. How did, so, yeah, erase that one. Now come over here. See there's a triangle with two, which means you can find that one. Okay. And now you have a straight line right next to it. Right? The straight line measures 180, so that would be there you go. So the one on top is the one I have highlighted. That's the one that I think everybody's gonna be like, I can't get that one. And I'm going to tell you how to get it. But all the others you should be able to get. There's a straight line. What's the straight line have to measure? There you go. One. Yeah. That's not a triangle. So you're, you're smart to think that it's going to bust, but look at it. It's not a triangle. That's why it's and there, that's what I'm fixing to tell you. There's something you should remember from middle school, but if not, I'm going to show it to you. Uh-uh. Turn to a neighbor. See if you're filling in with the same values. Remember, it's not cheating as long as you're actually trying to learn it. Okay, let's walk through this. Make sure that you understand the way I'm fixing to explain it. May not have been the way your mind saw it, but we should still come to the same answers, okay? Um, you're going to hear me say this phrase, go to what you know a lot. Um, one of the biggest complaints kids have about math is they'll say, I don't know where to start. Enter, go to what you know. You know good and well what a triangle is. I'm telling you right now, go to the triangle that has two angles given, because then the third one's easy to find. My mind went to triangle CDE. I see 100, 60, that means this has to be 20, right? 180 minus 100 minus 60. Then I immediately saw this is a straight line, which means from here to here has to measure 180 total, and that's 20, which leaves 160 right here. They have to add up to 180 because that's a straight line, okay? I'm going to put little degree symbols because that bothers me. All right. Then going back over here to the 100, do you notice D, F, and B, E are two straight lines crossing. Two straight lines crossing forms lightsaber. Vertical angles. Two straight lines crossing creates vertical angles. And they are directly opposite of each other. So if this is 100, then angle C would be 100 as well. Right? This is really... Actually, I'll just make the C into, oh no, I can't, because then I won't be able to read it. How did I squeeze it out of here, right here? All right, so that's 100. If you know one single angle in a pair of vertical angles, you can find all four. Why? Linear pair. So these were 100. Well, this is a straight line, which measures what? 180. 
So the one next to it has to be 80, which is also right there. Because they're vertical, right? You with me? I didn't put that one down there on the one pin. I didn't it's a straight line pin towards the other side. I don't know that that one was a straight line. That is a, that is a very, oh, it is a straight line. Yeah, it is. Is it a straight line? I did end up with 70. It looks like it curves on here, but look, watch the math though. This is a triangle here, correct? It adds up with that triangle. It does. So 80 and 30 means I've used 110, which leaves 70. So it does end up showing to 180, but I'll agree with you. The picture does look like it curves. Um, going back to this triangle, I know two of the angles. Um, 125 would leave 55 in that corner. Now this little square means 90 minus 25 minus 30 leaves 35. Now this really big triangle, I've got 110 and 35, that's 145. Max out at 180, so the gap is 35. 180 minus 145. Which puts us right with the one that I told you you're probably going to be stuck with and trying to figure out. This is not a triangle. This is what's called a quadrilateral. Okay? Quadrilaterals also have a special relationship, just like triangles do. Um, quadrilaterals trying to draw it purposefully weird. Hold on. Um, that ended up being pretty. I didn't mean to draw it pretty. Anyways, any given quadrilateral, you with me? Get off your phone. Any given quadrilateral can be drawn into two triangles by drawing a diagonal. Just draw one diagonal. And how many is in each triangle? 180. So every quadrilateral is 360. So that little shape up there, A, B, C, D, has to add up to 360. So let me take this off. And you should get 70 right here. Now, has, you're supposed to go through here and read these angles to make sure you are getting them right. Like you're reading them correctly. Have you tried it? Yes to some. I see some yes. Fill those in. You're reading those angles, writing the measurements. Then look up here and see if you got them correct. triangle sum theorem, which means the sum of all three angles of every single triangle is 180 degrees. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a relationship with what's called an exterior angle. This does not come up a lot. In fact, I would say this only comes up when I am purposefully trying to see, do you remember this exact conversation that I'm fixing to show you? Um, and it's a very simple, simple strategy, but sometimes people forget it because it doesn't get used a lot. Let's go back to the front of your paper, your flip book, and let's look at it. It's called the exterior angle theorem. There is a relationship between when you have any given triangle, and then one of these sides of the triangle looks like they just kept drawing it, right? You see this right here? I want you to draw an arc 
to show that I, I'm wanting you to focus your attention on that angle right there where it says X degrees. We're going to put degree symbol. Degree symbol, degree symbol. Here's the relationship. In the triangle, <coughs> notice that angles A and B do not touch the exterior angle that's in blue. Do you notice that? They don't touch it. Like A is over here. If I traced angle A, or if I drew an arc on it, I did not touch where that blue angle is at X degrees. If I trace that, I'm not touching that angle there. Now, if I trace this one, I'm touching it, right? So that, that's what I mean by angles A and B are over here, not touching the blue angle X. You with me? Because it's not touching it, that means they're not adjacent. Not adjacent. Okay. If you take these two angles right here, and you add them up, angles A and B, add them up, you will get the exact same number as the angle X. If you add them up, you will get the exact same number as the angle X. So I want you to adjust your picture here. I'm going to, and if you have a colored pen, this would help, but if not, it's okay. 45 plus 95 is going to come out of here at equal... What's 45 plus 95? 140. 140 degrees, and I want you to draw an arrow right there. <coughs> so 45 plus 95 equals 140, which is bam, that measure right there. Now let me show you why, okay? Let me show you why. You don't have to write this unless you want to. Can you tell me what this angle right here should be? What is it? 40. Right? All right, watch this. You don't have to write this. So 45 plus 95 plus 40, because those are the three angles in the triangle, have to add up to equal what? 180. Y'all stay with me. Right? Okay, and what's the new part I just showed you? That 45 plus 95 equals the 140, correct? Okay, look at this. Direct your attention right here, directly in front of you folks, right here. Do you see this right here? It's a linear pair, right? You got the 40 degrees over here, and what did we say that is? 140, all right. So the 140 plus the 40, is a linear pair, which is 180 degrees. Yes? Do you notice how these two numbers give you this? Do, and hold on. And do you notice how those two equations almost look identical? Like these two angles here gives me 140, which was the portion of the linear pair that was on the outside. That's why this relationship exists. It's because the three inside angles add to 180, and the two over here add to 180. So if we just take that one out, then these two add to equal the exterior. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep some of y'all awake. I'm losing some of y'all. All right, so that's the relationship. That's why. So let's look at the next picture. Um, what is not marked in the picture that could be marked? Once again, we have a pair of, there's vertical angles in here. I see two straight lines back to back. Let's draw an arrow to show that this is vertical angles. Right? That is in the corner, yeah. This is 100. All right. This is what type of triangle over here? Isosceles, which means what do we know about the bottom? They're the same. Well, this one already. <coughs> this one. No. So close. 
This one already has a congruent part, right? Because it's equal to this one over here. Well, then that means whatever this one is, this has to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle. Do I have enough information to find the missing angle of the isosceles triangle? Yes. I actually do, and it's because I know they have to be equal, right? All right, so what is the total here for this triangle? 180. What do we already know in it? All right, take that off, and what's left? 88, you divide by 2, and you get 44. Bam. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Let me walk through that again, because some of y'all are like, what? Isosceles triangle, bottom angles have to be equal. I know that's 92. I know they have to add up to 180. 180 minus 92 leaves me with 88. If they have to be equal, cut that in half, and that tells me that they're both... 44. Well, if that's 44, what's this? This is also 44. Now I've used 144 in this triangle, so what does that leave in the corner? 36. Now let's open up and practice this. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's all right. What, what's the practice for tonight? We got to help math. Oh, I'm in the hard. I mean, right now. Oh, my word. All right. Oh, it's 60. Let's. 645. You're starting to learn my sarcasm. There you go. Please be just like. Have I ever given you 60 problems? Uh, yes, really so, Only the other day. You've only ever given us like 10, 12. Maybe. That's hard to get my sarcasm. <laughs> 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 I don't, I don't really believe in dumping like 50 problems on you for the week because I feel like that already stresses some people out on Monday. Mondays are already stressful, so I believe in giving like 10, 10, 10. Yeah. Right? I know teachers that do that. Uh, if you don't know how to do 10 problems, you're not going to know how to do 30. So there's no need in me beating... Like, you know, you know, anyways, all right. There's not a warrant, you get like a million a week. So look at this right here. Look at this right here. Let's fill in what we know. There is a secret number here that's not actually labeled. It's 90. It would be the 90. Okay, so this is 90 degrees right here, and this is 30. It caps out at 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 30 leaves me with the 60. You do have two straight lines, which means you have vertical angles. Draw an arrow, write the word. You are training yourself to find those vertical angles because it makes life easier. Vertical angles are congruent. So since that one is 60, then this one over here is 60 which means this has to be 30. Now, when you go to read the angle measures, it says H, J, I. H to J to I. That would be 60. Okay. K, J, L would be what? Also 60. H, J, K, this should feel weird because it's on the outside, right? It's out here. Two ways to get it. One way is to recognize, well, that's a straight line with 60. So it's got to be, I already heard you say it, 120. The second way to get it is the new thing we just learned, the exterior angle theorem. If it's out here on the exterior side, I can add the two angles it's not touching the 90 and the 30, and I can get the measure of it, which is 120. And then IJL, IJL, same thing, it would be vertical with the other 120. Oh, 
This one's more what, what you will see like on your test when we take the test. You look at it and you should think to yourself, okay, what do I know for sure? You know this out here is 132, right? Two ways to get this. Go with me. I feel like my four-year-old's in the room. He sees a big construction. Yeah, I don't, I don't no. But I am recording. All right. This is 132. This is 132 right here. There's two ways to get this. We're trying to solve for x. Two ways. The way you're supposed to go, which is the exterior angle theorem. Y'all with me? Everybody paying attention? Look it over here. The exterior angle theorem says that the two angles right here and here that it's not next to, they add up to equal that. So the 4x minus 5 added with the 3x plus 1 has to equal 132. That's the way you're supposed to set it up. Now, what if you're taking this test and your, your mind goes blank and you completely forget this little trick? There's another way to set it up. It does take a little longer, but it's the exact same technique. If this is 132 over here, then what's this? It would have to be 48 because they make, they make a straight line, right? So another way to do this is to say, well, if that's 48, what is this plus this plus this have to be? Oh, so you can set all that you up. You can set all that up to 180. So there is a safety net there, okay? But the shorter way is to recognize that these are the two non-adjacent angles, and they add to equal 132. You do get a very ugly decimal. We're going to go to the nearest tenth. Oh, it's okay. like x is about 19.4. I'll agree, it's not a pretty number. About 19.4. That means about, yeah, it means I rounded. No, it's a, it, that means approximate. All right, this last one is one of my favorites. Because when you first look at it, you probably think there's no way. But it's actually not that bad at all. Um, you've got a combination of linear pairs. You've got triangles that add to 180. You also have one type of triangle called isosceles, which means your base angles down here are congruent. So you try it right now. I would say if you're struggling on where to start, because there's not a single triangle with two angles, start with a linear pair right here. Start with that linear pair. What's a linear pair have to measure? Ben, what's a linear pair measure? 180. Evan, what is a linear pair measure? Loud and proud with confidence. 180. Mason, what is a linear pair measure? Thank you. Y'all try this right now. Try it. I want to see your pencil moving. Oh, no. Well, turn to your neighbor. Uh, neighbor, help me out. Turn to minutes. Because you're the closest. Trying this right now. Find your linear pair. Mm -hmm. 